Welcome back everyone. This is Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I am bringing to you the next installment, if you will, for the Anker RZ uh, German made zigzag straight stitch sewing machine. Uh, I am sort of working my way around. Occasionally, I don't do this often because it's, it adds significantly to the time I spend overhauling machines, but I like to give little windows uh, sometimes as to how I approach a particular machine in terms of um, basically uh, going into different sections and when you're going to do an overhaul. This of course is the uh, clutch knob. This is the knob that you turn when you want to disengage the needle bar and wind a bobbin. Uh, I am actually going to loosen the set screw here. I'm going to take the clutch knob off. This is something you don't really have to do often. This is really part of a overhaul or, or really deep tuning of a sewing machine. Now this of course on the other side of this you, you have your set screw and then you have a washer. This is a washer and it has a, a place that it seats right like this. So I'm going to take that off of course and I'm going to pull the, the, hand, the hand wheel off. Uh, this is not part of your normal oiling okay again if your machine's running great and you're not particularly, uh, you know, you're not overhauling the machine, uh, you don't necessarily have to do this. But for those of you who are, I thought I would show it to you. Often what you see on the other side of your hand wheel is nothing particularly special. You might see some dust bunnies, which I see here, and a little bit of grease. That's normal. Uh, uh, one thing to look for, by the way, when you're doing this is that sometimes, uh, Thread, and I think I've covered this in some of the troubleshooting videos I've made, Thread has an interesting way of finding itself into things that spin. You can end up with sewing thread that's actually wrapped around the pulley of your motor. Uh, it can be on this, um, the drive shaft that your hand wheel is attached to. That often can happen because the bobbin winding goes on right in front here. And, you know, any kind of thread that gets loose and hanging will find itself there. So if you ever have a machine that's seems to be sluggish or maybe not functioning at all, functioning at all, you may have discovered that in fact you have threads. Uh, I think I found one recently when I was looking at the, uh, I think I may have shown that on a recent featherweight video. Anyway, uh, now that I've taken the hand wheel off, if, uh, if you want, you can always go in here and clean. I'll probably polish this up. The enamel looks really beautiful here. It just needs a little cleaning. Um, and then uh, we've got, let's see, on the hub itself, this is a good place, once you've inspected and you're not finding any you know, thread jams anywhere, you want to make sure that you're putting oil, whoops, that's not where I wanted it, I ended up with a drip. Um, this is an area that you don't uh, oil as a part of your normal oiling of the machine. I like to put a drop or two of oil on the threads of this shaft and up top. Um, and, you know, if you really want to be uh, picky, you can go into the center of your, uh, your hand wheel, which is really a big pulley when you think about it, right? You see the groove here for the belt. Um, and, you know, if you want, you can put, I've already put some oil here on the drive shaft. You can put a little bit on the inside uh, of the hand wheel. Don't go crazy. I mean, just a little bit I'm putting on, I'm getting a little dripping here. So, uh, uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you, and you may have seen this before, those of you who've seen photos of some of the work I've done um, on my listings, what I will often do is I will take, um, once again, a cotton swab, and I go around and I like to clean that groove in the pulley. You know, over the years you get, who knows, this old dirt, dust, grime, but whatever it is, you don't want it interfering with the friction that is required for your, um, for your uh, belt to, to perform. Because if you've got old oil or dirt or who knows what, it can cause issues with your belt. Now I just basically took a dry, uh, dry cotton swab to this. Um, you could take, a, if you have a cleaner, don't use, uh, I would not use alcohol in here. You'll start stripping the paint off. Um, you might be able to get away with like a diluted, maybe uh, 
you know, 10% alcohol, a little bit of water. You just want to get it clean, right? You want to cut it and then make sure it's dry. And then once it's dry, uh, you should be good to go. Uh, make sure there's no oil hanging around anywhere else on the hand wheel. Uh, not a big deal. Most hand wheels come off. If you have a necky, sometimes they stick. Uh, ironically, it's because necky had such close tolerances. They were beautifully engineered, but uh, if they've sat for a while, you may be, you may be busy. Uh, what else to show you? Um, that's, that's all I wanted to talk about basically on this side of things. So when I go to put the wheel back on, I'm going to basically just put it right on the shaft and it slid a little easier this time. I'm going to put my washer on. Notice that there are little flanges here that seat you, and they go in two directions. I want that to be the, you want to put the washer in so that the little flanges are angling up. I think I have that right. If I don't, the machine will tell me. Um, one thing to be sure of, you have a little, uh, uh, set screw here for your uh, washer and uh, your uh, washer knob, clutch knob, and you want to make sure that it's lubricated because uh, it's just a lot better than trying to find a replacement for such a thing. And even though I put oil here, you can even put a few drops on the, uh, the threads of this washer. Make sure, by the way, when you put this knob back on, you can see how easily the washer comes off. If you don't if you end up dislodging this washer when you're putting your clutch knob on, you may not know it and either it'll interfere with the knob screwing on properly or you can even dislodge that washer in a way that will cause problems. And that's, I think I've shown that on a troubleshooting video as well. So you always want to be uh, uh, careful with that. Just be aware that it's there. And again, I'm not done cleaning. I, I like to save most of my cleaning till the end. I'll be taking polish and polishing up this little clutch knob there. But anyway, that's essentially what I've done. And now because this uh, pulley on the motor is not painted, I can take alcohol. I can dip this, um, uh, oh, where's my alcohol? I can dip the cotton swab in my alcohol and I can clean. I can clean the inside of this pulley and again the reason I use cotton swabs is because they're very absorbent and as long as you don't you know flood it with alcohol you know I've wet the end of this uh, cotton swab with alcohol but it's you know it's not dripping you don't want alcohol dripping you're gonna be in real danger of harming that beautiful finish there but we've got the cotton swab and I'm just coming around and again you, you don't have to do this then this is just you know, I kind of go around the machine. It's a good way to make sure you don't miss anything. And I think I've already cleaned this pulley once. I'm not pulling much off. Sometimes you'll get dirt and grime, old threads here. Just make sure that's clean. Um, and uh, this alcohol will, will well, I say it'll evaporate on its own, but not much came off here. You, you know, obviously you can tell how dirty it is by what comes off on the cotton swab. And there you go. So that's basically your hand wheel. Uh, removing and checking for you know any problems with thread and dirt and then just lubricating it right so that the next time it needs to come off maybe it's because of a belt change it's going to come off easily right uh, these are things that remember a lot of your machines that those of you who are finding either you have them and you're pulling them out or uh, you found a machine and somebody said hey you want to take this old machine see what you can do with it uh, Again, a lot of these machines can be hard to disassemble sometimes simply because they've been sitting for a very long time. And what, now that I've done this lubricating on the hand wheel, that's not something I'm, you know, that's going to take care of it for quite a long time. That, the more you sew, uh, you don't necessarily have to keep oiling this every time you sew a project. That's different than the other oiling points on the machine. So there you go, guys. That's a video about hand wheel and clutch knob removal and lubrication. Uh, anyway, we'll be working our way around. Stay tuned. I'll be making more videos as I take on the Anker RZ, a machine that, again, I've never seen one of these, but I've seen other machines that have similar setups. Machines, even though they look different and are different in many ways, they also have some common... Um, by the time you get into when this machine was made, which I'm believing was in either the late 30s or, or, or 1940s, um, you know, there are certain things you could see on many brands. There are certain standardizations that occurred. So you don't have to always reinvent the wheel, although 
as we come along, I can already tell some areas on this machine, they're going to be new to me and all of you guys. So stay tuned and uh, I will be producing more videos on this machine as we go along. Thanks for watching everyone.